now that you can hear how the notes work, changing notes, let's talk about how to actually read them. So in rhythm, when we were reading the different rhythms, we had actual different note shapes that told us whether it was a whole note or a quarter note or an eighth note. But in the notes, the way we tell is by how the note is positioned on the staff. So you may have noticed when we were doing all the rhythms that we had those sort of five lines, but every single note that we were playing was all on the same line because we weren't changing notes. If you move to different lines and spaces within the staff, then that gives you the different pitches. So as you go higher, the notes get higher, and as you go lower, the notes get lower. So the top line of the staff is a higher note, and the bottom line of the staff is a lower note. And you can keep going lower and higher than the staff, but every single line and space represents one step in the music. Now the other thing about the staff is that there's actually different kinds of them. So you'll notice in most of the music we've been doing, there's a treble clef at the beginning, that nice little swirly thing. With the treble clef, you can see it almost looks like a little bit of a G, how the bottom of it comes together, almost like an uppercase G. And that line, that the sort of G shape circles, is actually the G line. So any notes, no matter what type of note it is, what rhythm the note is, if it lands on that line, then it's going to be a G. Another really popular and common clef is the bass clef, also sometimes known as the F clef because it kind of looks like an F, and those two dots go on either side of the F line. So no matter what rhythm you have on that line, it's going to be an F. So you may be actually already familiar with these names because the names of the notes are actually the same as our alphabet, but the musical alphabet is a little bit different than the normal alphabet you're used to working with because instead of going from A all the way to Z, it actually stops at G. So let's try singing the musical alphabet song. Ready? Go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, stop. See, you probably wanted to go on to H because we're so used to doing that. But the musical alphabet, instead of going on to H, it does go on because there's more than just seven notes that we can play. You heard on the high, high and the low, low was way more than seven notes apart. But instead of going on to H, it circles back around to A. So the musical alphabet song actually goes from A to G and then back to A and just keeps looping around that. So let's try that song. Ready? Go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 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 A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And you can just keep going, looping around, um, and it, it's has a limit to it. There's low, low notes that we almost can't hear and high, high notes that get really squeaky and we don't want to hear. Um, so there is some limit, but you can just keep looping around. Uh, when you run out of notes at G, you just keep going up in A. Now, speaking of running out or, or when this repeats, that's exactly the way that it works is as you get higher and higher, you go forwards through the alphabet and you loop back around. So we could start down here on an A, and then we go A, B, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then we have to repeat at A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. So you can see as you go up, you go forwards through the alphabet, and each line and then space is a letter. So the bottom line of the treble clef staff is an E. The space above that is one letter forward through the alphabet, which is F. The line above that's one letter forward G. And now we're out of letters, so the, the space above that loops back around to A, and then space A, line B, space C, line D, space E, line F, so on and so forth. The other thing that's good to notice is if we go forwards through the alphabet going up, line and space at a time, then going down, we go backwards through the alphabet. So if we start here on the uh, space that is A, 
then we go down to the next line and go backwards through our loop back to G and then backwards to F, backwards to E, backwards to D. So if you can memorize that the treble clef is the G clef and you know that it's circling the G line, then from there you can find out what any note is by counting through your musical alphabet. So let's try a few of these. So the first thing to look at is which clef you're in. Are you in the G clef where the, the sort of G is circling the G line? Or are you in the F clef where the two dots are on either side of the F line? Again, another name for these is G clef is treble clef, F clef is bass clef. And then we can count from there. So let's look at this note. Now, you can see it's not on the G line, but it's just one space below the G line. So if the G line is G, we're going one down, so we're gonna go one backwards through the alphabet. So what note comes right before G in the alphabet? And if you said F, then you are correct. Now, what if we go instead of one space below, to one letter backwards, we go one space above to one letter after. What would that be? Now, if you said H, you're almost correct because that would be the next letter in the normal alphabet. But remember, the music al musical alphabet does not have H, so we're back around to A. So that is actually an A. Let's try this with a few other examples. So I'm gonna put up a few on the screen and I want you to take your time to go through and look at them. So here is the first one. So we're in G clef, G line is circled. Now count up through the musical alphabet with each space and line being a letter. So the first space is A, the next line is B, the next space is C, and then our note, is on D. Yeah, so that note is a D. Let's try another one. So we're still in G clef, but now we're down a couple notes. So I'll let you count the spaces and lines down to that note. And that one is an E. So we were at G, we go backwards through the alphabet to F on the space, backwards through the alphabet one more to E on the line. Great job. Let me put up a few more for you to just practice through and I'll put up the answers after that. So go ahead and look at the next screen um, and pause it on there. And then when you feel like you know the answers to all of them, then unpause it and I will go on to the answers. So good luck naming those. Now that's how it works in treble clef or G clef where we're circling that G line. Let's try a few examples in bass clef, also known as F clef. So if you look at this note, we're not on the F line, the line that has in between those two dots, that's the F line, remember? We're not on that one, but we're actually one above that. So just one space above that means that we go forwards through the alphabet one letter, so what's one letter after F? G, exactly, good work. So G is that one space. Now let's look at this example. So this is a whole line below. So remember that we count the spaces and the lines. So we start at our F line that we know, and then you go down to the space, which is backwards through the alphabet one letter, which is E. And then we go down to the next line, which again is backwards through the alphabet one letter. So what's one letter before E? D is the right answer. Great work. So I'm gonna put up a few examples of these. Again, go ahead and pause it so you can have some time to think through it. And then the answers will pop up on the screen after that.
Great work. Now this may take a little bit of practice and a little bit of time at first because it's not super familiar, but as you continue to practice this, you'll get more and more familiar and you'll start to get what I call sort of anchor notes memorized in your brain. So for now, we just have the G line and G clef and the F line and F clef as sort of our anchors where we're counting from. But as you get more practice, you may get more comfortable with some other lines. For example, in treble clef or the G clef, you might start to memorize that the bottom line is E and the top line is F. You may have learned some notes before and you may have learned some kind of acronym like every good boy does fine for the lines of the G clef or maybe you've learned that the spaces spell out the word face F-A-C-E. Those are all great ways to memorize and little shortcuts to find out what the notes are. But remember that your best bet is always going to be to just count from the G line. If you're not sure what it is, you can always count from the G line in G clef or count from the F line in F clef and figure out where you are. As long as you know which clef you're in and you know your musical alphabet, then you'll be in great shape. If you want more practice naming notes, you can just Google note naming games. There's a lot of fun ones. One of them that I used to play is called Staff Wars. Um, sometimes it's, it's hard to find exactly the same ones, but there's all kinds of ones available on the internet to practice looking at a staff and putting in the note name. I'll put a link to at least one in the description of this video. If you want more practice reading your different class, reading the staff, and getting your musical alphabet going and naming the different notes.